my big head's in the way. If you want to get notifications, I assume most of you did, you can uh, go to www.travis.live and we'll text out notifications. I want to welcome everybody to our Monday Lunch and Learn. Hello. So we'll do just a, a quick lesson today. We, we won't uh, this week, we'll scale things down a little bit. Uh, we'll just have some time for connection this week. Let folks enjoy this week of Christmas. Let folks enjoy uh, post-Christmas week. And then we'll get ready for our January 2022. I'm really excited about January. It's just right around the corner. Could be more excited. I, I really believe it'll be a breakthrough year for some people. We start out each and every year uh, with folks committing to have a breakthrough and I tend to focus on all those that didn't have the breakthrough. In other words, they got started and they did all right for a few weeks and then they, they just uh, uh, went, went right back to those compulsions and those habits. But what I want to do at the end of this year is just celebrate and focus on all those that did commit to having a healthier and happier 2021 and they followed through and they did it and some of y'all are here uh, the great Angela Chai over like 250 260 pounds lost so many of y'all have done so tremendous so God has really blessed you all and I just want to focus on y'all these next two weeks and and just say what a what a blessing y'all been to me and the Shibola community helping folks lose weight. The Shibboleth members have now lost close to 4 million pounds and more than 7 million inches. Bless the name of the Lord. That's awesome. And now we're getting ready for another year. If God tarries, God's coming and we're, at, we're here, we're still here in 2022. It's going to be a breakthrough for some more people. Isn't it amazing that you can go through so much adversity and struggle and then just get right with the Lord and walk in step with the Holy Spirit and everything changes. Isn't that awesome? How everything can change in your mind and heart. You can try for years to fix your own mind and fix your own heart, but you just can't do it without the help of the Lord. Can I get an amen on that? You just can't do it until you draw nigh to the Lord and approach that throne of grace, that throne of mercy, approach our tender-hearted God. Until you do that, you may struggle your whole life. But Jen, then just with a word, God can change how I think and how I behave just because I had a willing heart, you know. So God is just awesome. So I hope that we can just continue on in this track that we're on here, ignoring what the world's got going on, ignoring how we're an outcast. I was reading this morning about how I'm an outcast and it's a good thing and some of y'all are outcasts do I have anybody that feels like an outcast it it almost feels like this old world is vexing your righteous soul and then before you know it you doing like them and you know that's not you you know that's not who you really are but even though you're still a child of God you just can't help it because of that environment and then then it's like God is, he, he puts us, he puts God's children on a leash almost, right? We can get so far off by ourselves and, and get in a little bit of trouble, but then he's going to pull that leash back and, and say, now, I love you. Come back here. Now you're getting too far outside the boundaries that I've established for you. And that's what some of us are dealing with. That's uh, what I dealt with. Now I'm not, I can't speak for you. I try to speak for you, but I, I can't. I can only speak about myself and my walk of faith and I remember when I high blood pressure acid reflux type 2 diabetes a high cholesterol and depression medication I remember all of that stuff still to this day and how did I get in this kind of situation I wondered so often and then boom boom like that like that God changed everything for, for me and you know I was doing like everybody else was doing and God wanted me to do different. God wants me to be disciplined. And, and God knows that through discipline, I'll find more joy and more pleasure. So I'll hush. I'll get off my rant. It's just amongst God's people today. 
I feel so honored and privileged to have been with you all year and to be teaching and helping. I just love it. You've helped me a lot more than I've helped you. So let's get started with this. You can do it, Miss Judy. You just got to decide. You got to stay, stay there at the feet of Jesus. Don't be like Martha. I digress. Don't be like Martha in the Bible. Martha was busy with all of her tasks, and Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. And Martha was complaining to Jesus about, Mary, why is she sitting at your feet? We got work to do. We got things that, in other words, the world's got, it's trying to run you all the time. The world's trying to dictate you uh, what you do and how you do all the time. And before you know it, you lose track of, hey, I'm supposed to be living an abundant life in Christ. And Mary was sitting there at Jesus' feet, and Jesus said, Now, Martha, Martha, you are worried and careful about much, but it is Mary that does that good part. So I'm just going to sit at the feet of Jesus with Mary the rest of this year and in 2022. I hope, I hope, you, I hope you'll join me. All right, any questions today about nutrition, weight loss, wellness, behavior modification? And then after I answer questions, I'll get over to our quick reminder lesson. And then we'll let you go for today. Any questions for me? Don't be shy. Hey, Marla Curry. Hey, all my good friends on Facebook. Any questions for your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man Travis? <laughs> Any questions? Don't be shy. Don't bite. There's no bad question except for the one that you don't ask. Give it just a minute. Amy says, all my blood work a week ago was normal, but bad cholesterol was 109. We'll just keep working on that. It takes time. We can't, uh, we can't correct everything overnight. So what happens with the Shibboleth program is if you've got bad numbers, if your blood work don't come back, the way you want it, your blood pressure is not where you want it. What happens with Shibboleth with consistency, you'll see the blood pressure improve, you'll see A1C improve. Now that A1C number, we see that across the board with strict adherence to Shibboleth, people getting where they need to be with their A1C, which means you're prolonging your life. A1C is a primary indicator of shortened lifespan. So good job if you're getting the A1C down, everybody. As far as those cholesterol numbers, those things are overhyped a lot of times anyway. Uh, but if we keep, if we stay with Shibboleth and we start eliminating uh, sugar and starch from being centric, you can't eliminate it all, but being centric to our uh, daily diets, then we'll see those cholesterol numbers come down. What a lot of people don't realize is that bad cholesterol isn't so much coming from the foods with bad cholesterol in them. They're coming from your body ramping up its production of bad cholesterol. So why would your body produce more bad cholesterol? Because you're in a state of chronic inflammation. Why would you be in a state of chronic inflammation? Where does that come from? It comes from sugar, starch, and hydrogenated fats. So if we can start eliminating those as far as it being centric to our diet, like it is in the American diet, then we'll see our body slow down its production of bad cholesterol. I've had two people wanting to know more about Shibboleth because of my weight loss. What's the best way for them to get to see what you do so they can decide if it's right for them or not? Ask them to come to a class. First class is always free. We're a ministry first and foremost. We operate with people who come to class on the honor system, just like one coming to the little old church house. Uh, if you go to a good church, they don't keep passing the plate around and asking, you know, over and over and over, hey, I've been to them churches where they're like, hey, you need to put some more in here. Now, we don't do that around here. What we do is on the honor system, when someone feels that this is the right lifestyle for them, we promise them to pay our little bit of dues that it cost us to run the program, but otherwise they can come. We ask that they come to one free class and then make a decision, but if they need one or two, that's fine with me. I'm never going to done anybody for anything. So yeah, just have them come to a class and see what it's all about. Patricia, 
Wanting to try a 36 hour fast, is water the only thing to have during that time? Uh, Patricia, that would be the best fast, okay? What we're trying to create with a fast mostly is the uh, get, we wanna get the benefits of the phenomenon that is called autophagy, the, the clearing away of toxins from the cells, uh, making our organs healthier, uh, make, just making our body healthier, giving our body time to recover from digestion, constant digestion in this country as we're eating and grazing all day, which is not a good way to live or eat. So you're wanting to stick with nothing but fluid water. Water would be best. Now, myself, I modify that a little bit. I've read the studies, and a lot of the studies say that it's the macronutrients uh, that prevent you from getting into deep autophagy. Uh, so you want to stay away from protein, carbs, and fat when you're trying to create this, uh, this phenomenon called autophagy uh, in your body that you're going to hear more and more about in coming years uh, from legit wellness um, gurus or whatever. I mean, I've been talking about it for years now, uh, but it's just the, the benefits of autophagy are amazing. But if you're going to stick true to it, it should be water only. But I modify mine and I will allow myself some caffeine. Some studies say that that slows down uh, the process of autophagy. You don't get all the benefits from it. Then other studies say it has very little impact on autophagy if you're just consuming caffeine. So I might have coffee uh, I, as well from time to time. If I'm trying to fast and I really feel like I need something, I might do a little bone broth, but that protein is going to slow down uh, that autophagy response. So it's just up to you. If you can go uh, through your, your fast with nothing but water, that is ideal. But if you need a cup of coffee, I don't think uh, it's going to hurt you that much. Jennifer, my A1C has went from 12.8 down to six since March the 1st. And see, even though we know that pleases our doctor who cares about us, that's good. It pleases our doctor. But you have now extended your lifespan. Isn't that great? It, statistically speaking, right? From a wellness standpoint, you have added years to your life because you got your A1C down. Good job. Bless the name of the Lord. Hey, Alice. Alice, how do they get in a free class? They simply register for the free class. Miss Alice, do you know how to find the classes on the website? Let me know if you don't, and I'll show you today in class. They can simply register. All right, so let me let me show you. I see your next comment now. Let me, I'm still scrolling down. I just seen it. <clears throat> You'll see more classes next year. Of course, we're ramping things down right now, but here we go. So here's the website, myshibolatha.com. Everybody see this? This is how you get to a free class. First class is always free. You go to free class. See that, everybody? Everybody see that? Free class. And then you click that. Some classes you can't register for, some you can. So you'll be able to see the ones you can register for right here. If, if it's allowed, the ones that don't have a register button are for members only. Okay. So this is a good way for them. And that's all a free class does. We're going to teach them an amazing program, but you know, you, they, they need to meet the team. They need to understand that our hearts are here to help them. This is not a gimmick. This is a, a real thing. We're really teaching people, really helping them modify their behaviors uh, it's just, it's the real deal. Our program's the real deal. No gimmicks, no pills, no potions. And generally speaking, our, our price is so very low. Uh, if people like us, <laughs> I would prefer Kim teach all the classes. <laughs> yeah, everybody likes Kim, but uh, about half of people like me. So between myself, Kim and Jason, if they can get in a free class, then they should, they, hopefully they'll see the benefits of the program and they'll come go with us. Uh, Deidre, Travis, how often do you do a 36-hour fast? Uh, back at the beginning of the year, before I blew out my Achilles, 
Uh, I spent quite a bit of time doing three per week. Uh, I don't say that I recommend that to everybody, but I got in a real zone and a flow of doing a, a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I had some of my best results ever from a wellness standpoint, a weight loss standpoint, got my body fat to my all time low. It's up now because I ruptured my Achilles playing basketball. Uh, and no, no excuse. I still could have fasted, but it just disrupted my flow, my schedule. Um, but what I do recommend is once a week, if you can do that, that would be awesome. But do it as much as you can. What you will do is better than what you won't do. Uh, 36 hour fasting is not required to enjoy the many benefits of our program, but it's definitely a bonus. Uh, if you can get some of those 36 hour fast in, uh, the times that I have the wherewithal to do it and I'll do it on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I feel amazing. I get such mental clarity and energy and drive and determination. It's just amazing at what staying away from food and all that work your gut has to do to break down food. It's now it does take a little bit of time because in, in the initial phases of a fast, uh, you still got decent levels of blood sugar and you're still having some cravings, but when you stick to a fast and then the next day, when you come off the fast, you have a perfect day uh, where you're getting in plenty of protein and good fats. It, it starts really catching up where, man, you just feel incredible mentally, physically. It's just hard to get started. You know, you got to get into that 18, 19 hours before you're not, you feel like your belly's not eating your backbone. Uh, but you, you, it's not necessary. But if you could pull off one a week, that would be an awesome challenge to challenge yourself with. Are we going to do the detox at the beginning of the year? We'll probably do a detox early next year. Uh, we like to feel the pulse of the clients. I suspect what I'll be doing, the plan right now is at the beginning of the year that I will teach um, curriculum-based classes. I will ask Jason to do a detox if he can fit it in. Uh, maybe he can do one because I think I'm going to have my hands full with the new Shibboleth Journey curriculum. Uh, and the Tiger's Eye curriculum, where it will be four-week classes. So I'll be teaching a four-week Shibboleth Journey class and then a four-week Tiger's Eye class. But if you feel like the, the detox is more your lane, I'll see if Jason wants to do that. I don't know that I'll be able to incorporate it until probably late first quarter. Uh, what do you have during the 36 hour fast? Um, I don't have anything except for water uh, and zero calorie beverages when I'm doing a fast. I, I will, as mentioned, occasionally have a spark or a AdvoCare spark or coffee. But otherwise, I don't, I don't want any protein, uh, any major carbohydrate or fat because that would prevent me from receiving all the many benefits of autophagy. Good questions, everybody. Any other questions? Hey, Lynn Eldon, I don't know if you're still here. I just seen you on Facebook. Merry Christmas to you too. Merry Christmas. Anyone else? Is it better to start after dinner or breakfast? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. I think I understand it. I start mine after dinner. So here's how I do my 36-hour fast. I've never done one on any day. You can do it any day you want, but I've never done one on any day other than Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, so on Sunday night, I have dinner, and then that starts my fast. And then I won't eat again until Tuesday around noon. Then I'll eat Tuesday for dinner. And then I'll stop eating until Thursday at noon. And then I'll eat Thursday dinner. And I'll stop eating until Saturday at noon. It's a beautiful week. I love doing it. It's a challenge to get started. Um, because you got to let those insulin levels and sugar levels abate some so that you're not having cravings. Uh, but that's how I do mine. I'm certain that you could start it after breakfast if you wanted to, but I've never done that. I 
I always have a dinner, a real good dinner, and then I start my fast. Anybody else? And if you think about it, you're you're looking at uh, 72 and 36, 108. Think about that. You're look over the course of a week when you pull that off. You're having 108 hours of fasting time that nothing bad comes from that unless you have you're dealing with low blood sugar issues because you have underlying issues. You'll need to work with your doctor in conjunction with your doctor if you're going to try to fast and you have low blood sugar issues. And, and there's things that we can do if I'm experiencing a low blood sugar issue, uh, then I'm certainly going to have some Advocare rehydrator, some berries. I'm not going to make myself sick, uh, and I'll still get some of the benefits of autophagy. Um, but otherwise, nothing bad comes out of fasting. If you fast 108 hours, is that, I hope I'm doing the math right, over the course of a 168-hour week, uh, you're, you're going to really reap some major benefits. Jessica, is there ever an issue with not getting enough calories? I was planning my food for the week, and I've always heard minimums should be around 1,200 a day. I didn't have that for most of the days. Uh, getting Not getting enough calories is a huge issue. It's called going into what the world calls starvation mode. Huge issue amongst starving people. So in other words, if I'm dealing with someone uh, in an underindulgent culture, who has no excess body fat and they have now ridded themselves of all reserve fat, uh, if they're not getting enough calories, they go into starvation mode. For myself, I have no excess fat. Uh, I do have quite a bit of reserve fat and then I still have essential fat. I'm in no danger of going into starvation mode. Now, if I'm operating on low calories, um, I'm operating in a calorie deficit because I'm trying to lose fat, then the danger is not getting enough protein. If I don't get enough protein, then that calorie deficit is going to be made up by my body uh, cannibalizing its own muscle tissue. So with Shibboleth, if one has excess fat, uh, if they are following the food combination rules and getting in enough protein, they're in no danger of going into any type of made up starvation mode that um, the, the gurus, the wellness know-it-all gurus uh, try to scare people to death about. No, in the United States of America, the problem is getting too many calories, not, not getting enough calories. Uh, but the point is justified in that you do need to make sure that your meal episodes have protein on the plate. Now, what I also tell people is if you're getting under 7,000 calories in a week, so I'm not interested in a day. If I do 500 calories today and 1,500 tomorrow, you're not going in starvation mode. So where I get concerned about someone is when they're getting less than 7,000 calories per week, then I really want to start looking at what they're doing and ensuring they're getting enough protein. I hope that makes sense. So if one day, two days, you didn't get 1,200 calories, don't worry about that. As long as you're following your Shibboleth daily disciplines, you're just going to get healthier and more well. A good way to know, how do I know? How do I know I'm not hurting myself with Shibboleth? Get your blood work done before Shibboleth and after 12 weeks of Shibboleth. And you'll be convinced that no matter what anybody tells you that, hey, here is real evidence that the program's working. It's not just anecdotal evidence. Please don't listen to people that tell you that you're going to go in starvation mode if you don't have uh, all of your excess body fat gone. Does that make sense, everybody? I want everybody to say, I hear you, Travis. I hear you. <laughs> I want to know that you got that point. <laughs> everybody, because she raises a good point. And I'm fighting against misinformation. It's called fake nutritional news. <laughs> All right. Uh, it may, can, can I ask y'all this? Because y'all know I answer this one probably as much as anyone. When I say 
when I go through that, is there anybody that gets like a reality check in her heart and a chuckle like, he's right. <laughs> anybody? <laughs> Does it? But you know, when we just hear it, it's like, oh, I don't want to go in starvation mode. But if we think about it and we really break it down and we understand why one goes into star, that's an evolutionary biological process that our body goes in when there's times of deprivation. But you see, when we have excess body fat, we're not being deprived because that stored food that we overate that we've got to get rid of. Does that make sense, everybody? That, that's what you're, you're we're, none of us are fat. We're just carrying around a lot of stored food <laughs> that we need to get rid of in the form of calories. I hope that helps y'all. All right, more good questions. My aunt started doing a 20 hour fast and she's lost a lot of weight. She's pushing 80. Good. The Bible talks to us a lot about fasting. It's very important. Not just for spiritual reasons, but also for as a health tonic. <laughs> if you're doing, Deidre, if you're doing multiple fast, you've got to be losing five to seven pounds. That no, no. No, not even doing fasting will you lose five to seven pounds of fat per week. See that? I uh, appreciate you bringing that up. That is an unrealistic expectation. Um, now, I can lose 10 pounds in a day. I can lose 10 pounds in a day. I can also put on 10 pounds in a day. Is it all fat that I'm putting on or losing? No, it's water weight, sugar weight. It, it's not, it's waste. Um, when we're fasting, we're going to lose some water, some sugar, some waste, and some fat too. We do not lose fat in pounds per day. Y'all hear, hear that one? Let me give you some more truth. We do not lose fat in pounds per day. Well, Travis, I'm losing a pound a day. No, you're not. Not a pound of fat. It's impossible. What kind of calorie deficit do you have to be in per day to lose one pound of fat. Do I have any experienced members here? This is one pound of fat. This is how much space it takes up. So in order to lose one pound of fat a day, I'd have to, right on Nisha, I'd have to be in a 3,500 calorie calorie deficit per day. That ain't happening. That's not going to happen. You're not going to do it. Unless you're 500, 600 pounds, you're not going to be able to do that. You can lose ounces of fat every day. So when you see those big fluctuations or those people that post those huge numbers, typically what's going on there, they just had a blow it day and they're getting back on the program. They're always chasing their tail. They're always getting started. They're always losing water and sugar. And then they go off the grid and they gain it back and they do it again and again and again and again. Then you'll, you know, you'll have some people that can lose a half a pound a day, but that is hard because you have to be in a about a 1,750 calorie calorie deficit a day, and that would require calorie deficit plus a lot of exercise. That's possible, uh, but it's more likely that you can lose a quarter pound of fat a day. So if you don't think that that's a lot, this is a fat model. So a quarter pound. Let me try to get this to focus. A quarter pound would be about this much, right? That's a quarter pound. Is that a lot of hunk of chunk to lose in a day? That's a lot of hunk of chunk. It'll start adding up. You just got to be consistent. So we'll never be able to lose five to seven pounds of fat per week. We will be able to lose um, – Five, five, six, seven pounds a week for the first few weeks of water and waste and sugar. Um, yes, we can do that if you're just concerned with losing the weight, uh, but you won't be able to do that week over week over week, even in a fasted state. For example, let me give it to you another mathematical way. I burn, if I'm not trying to lose weight, I can have about 2,000 calories a day and maintain, I'm six foot three, 200 pounds. So it takes me to maintain this weight about 2,000 quality.
counting calories. Okay, so if I fasted, if I fasted today, would I lose a pound of fat? No, I would only be in a 2000 calorie calorie deficit if I didn't eat anything. So I'd only lose about a half a pound of fat. The rest of the weight that I would lose today would be water and sugar. Is that my, everybody got that? Does that make sense? We don't want to set ourselves up for uh, unrealistic expectations. Are there in Nicole asked, are there any books you recommend reading that align with our eating lifestyle? I've never read a book that has that um, uh, puts all of the components together like we do. I've never read a book that does it. Now, there are programs, believe it or not. I'm probably the uh, <laughs> I've been doing this for 20 years. There's some programs out there that you in the years gone by, you've seen on infomercials. I taught those people. <laughs> it just didn't work out for me, and it worked out for them. Uh, and I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to talk them up simply because they stole from me. <laughs> I've been doing it a long time, and uh, they were able to to take it and mass merchandise it. So I could talk about those couple of programs. Uh, but when it comes to what we teach, I recommend sports nutrition certifications. Uh, they're not going to put as much emphasis as I do on food combining, but a good sports nutrition manual, uh, IFFA, certain cert certifications would be good reads. Now, what I will tell you is for the behavior, behavior modification part of what we do, Made to Crave is a good one. As a Man Thinketh is a good one. Hung by Your Own Tongue is a good one. Those are good for the behavior modification. But as far as a, um, a weight loss book, I haven't read any, one, any book that I remotely even like because they try to eliminate at least one macronutrient in almost every book that I have read. Uh, they try to vilify uh, whether it be protein, carbs, or fat. And really, then it just becomes a calorie reduction only program. I believe in calorie reduction and food combining to control insulin. And I don't believe in ever getting rid, permanently getting rid of any macronutrient. <laughs> I got Nicole to laugh out loud. <laughs> Alice, best way to exercise to make my belly cut. Uh, best way to exercise to make your belly cut. So the first thing is to give the visual uh, that we've cut, that you've got some abadabits. And the visual comes from calorie deficit and insulin control. Getting You've got abs. Everybody here has got abadabits. Everybody here has got abs. But they're covered by a layer of fat. So the first thing that we do is calorie deficit, insulin control, and shed that unwanted body fat. Then to tone the abdominal muscles, we need to do a lot of core work. Uh, your stretch a minute is a great place to start. Utilizing your stretch a minute because, for example, when you do sit-ups, uh, typically you're repping them out bad for your back, doesn't do much for your stomach. With a stretch a minute, you hold you hold and contract the muscle. Then you release and you do it again until the thing beeps and you tone and strengthen your core with lower back exercises and tummy exercises. A lot of twist. You, you know, you can take the old broom handle, put on your shoulders if you don't have a stretch a minute. Lots of twist will give you a narrower uh, waist and you'll see some definition start to show in your obliques. Uh, squats, believe it or not, squats, full body weight squats, uh, that if you keep your core tight is a great ab exercise. Uh, I prefer leg raises uh, much, uh, much over sit-ups or crunches, leg raises. Uh, so those are great exercises. The key here is nutrition, 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 and then nutrition, 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 then Nutrition, 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 and then consistent exercise. What is a macronutrient? So you 
capital fast track. This is where we learn about macros, my friend. Alice, fast track, if you've already been through it, let's go through that again because these are basics to our program. Uh, macro, micronutrients, and phytonutrients. Macros is you, macro is like it sounds big. So your big nutrients that you find in food, your macronutrients are protein, carbohydrate, fat, and water. Those are your macronutrients. Please repeat the behavior modification books. My favorite, the Bible. The Bible, number one. The Bible. The Holy Bible. Top 10. All, all, ten, all the top 10 slots on my list are the Bible. It's helped me more with behavior modification than anything else because I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. That is the instruction manual that God gave me. So when I th things aren't going right spiritually or physically for me, I turn to it. Next, once you've read the Bible, next, um, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. As a Man Thinketh. Beautiful, short read. Um, helps you understand the power of your thoughts. The next one I recommend, and these are for a reason, is Hung by the Tongue. Hung by the Tongue. I can't remember the author off the top of my head, but it's Hung by the Tongue. And that helps you understand the power of your words. And then lastly, Made to Crave is a good book. There are many more, but those will be my four go-tos. Awesome, awesome. We love our fellow nutrition fanatics like myself, Nicole. Thank you. Francis P. Martin. Thank you, Tammy. I couldn't remember, but that is, that's who it is. Absolutely. It, that's who it is. I should know that, Martin. Read that book several times, and uh, as a man think of it, I've probably read 20, 30 times. It's, I love that book. I listen to it on audio book when I'm driving. Yes, ma'am, Tammy. The uh, Holy Bible, um, Book of Proverbs is a good place to start. As a man think of home by the time made to crave, that's them. James Allen is uh, the uh, As a Man Thinketh, and Francis Martin hung by the tongue. Anybody else? Yes, it is a good book, Nicole, and it usually is free. Uh, I used to ha I used to keep them in the in person classes I taught, and I would hand them out because I, I so believed it could help help folks. And then people would say it's too hard to read, and then I know they're not ready for change. You know, read it slow, digest what it's saying. You know, it's kind of old style writing, very uh, artistic writing. Uh, but if you consider what it's saying deeply, you start having those aha moments because you start realizing how you have everything in your life has been created by the power of your thoughts and words. Every, every negative thing that I have dealt with in my life, every negative thing, oh, let me not thing, not thing, every negative emotion that I've experienced uh, that has caused me to then go and behave incorrectly and, and yield a negative result has been due to my thoughts and or words. And every good thing in my life that caused me to go and produce and do something positive has been related to powerful positive words and uh, thoughts. Hey, Patty Bass. Patty's with us, the great Patty Bass. We love Patty. What a good friend of the program, good friend of ours. We love you, Patty. Merry Christmas. Anybody else? Any, anyone else got an, any other question before we go? No need for the mini lesson today. I'll keep it in my back pocket. Y'all have kind of drove this today, and it's been great. You know, that's what, what preachers do, right? We come with a sermon, but if the church wants to talk and uh, 
won't work. Y'all are working today. I like it. We, we'll go with that. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, where we want to be. What's the spirit of the people feeling? Anybody else? All right. Well, I've enjoyed being with everybody uh, uh, here today at this Lunch and Learn. Uh, we will continue our Lunch and Learns um, through uh, probably Thursday, and then we won't be back with you until Monday. Sasha and I are working around the clock with our team, most of them's overseas that do the tech stuff. And uh, I'm going to withhold doing the evening classes until we get through Christmas. Um, so I will be coming to you live for the lunch and learns. And then we have a huge class schedule that we're getting ready for in January, uh, as you might can imagine. Um, and I've got all kind of classes that won't just be a class that you'll have to sign up for the four class series, that kind of thing. Uh, cause we got a lot to offer next year, more than we've offered in a long time because we're transitioning to be a ministry and, uh, I'm putting all my time and efforts into teaching and helping people, uh, with curriculum based classes like I'd wanted to do this year and, uh, didn't do that, but we're determined to do it next year. Thank you, Deidre. All right, y'all, we love you, enjoyed it today, and don't hesitate to reach out to us if you need us. Most of our, a lot of our team and staff is off this week, so if Sasha and I aren't getting to you quick enough, just send us an email to info at myshaboth.com. We'll do our best to, to get you an answer. Y'all be uh, prayerful for us and patient with us the next two weeks because the majority of our folks will uh, be enjoying their families. All right, y'all. We love you, and we'll see you next time. Yes, only lunch and learns this week, uh, unless we get unction to go live one evening because we're caught up or something. Uh, we've got a lot of work we're behind on, and uh, January is not going to wait on us to get ready, so we're going to be using our evenings to get ready. All right, y'all. God bless, and we'll talk to you at our next lunch and learn. Bye, y'all.